Hey guys, Adam Shaw here. This fight's from back in 2008. Uh, Borkow versus Sato. It's actually a rematch. Um, Borkow won their first fight. Uh, uh, in fact, Borkow at this time was the king of K1. He was already a two-time Grand Prix winner. Um, Sato was a good fighter, but not really who you'd say was the best coming out of Japan at that time. Um, I'd probably give that to Masato, um, who was a Grand Prix winner himself. Um, but yeah, this is an interesting one. I've seen it be speculated that Borkow took a dive and whatever else. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it and we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, these, these stadiums were huge. Um, there's, a, there's a height difference between uh, Borkow and Sato. And Sato getting to work very quickly. Look how quickly he's throwing out these kicks. Um, you know, I'm probably trying to catch Borkow cold. Um, Borkow didn't really break out of the, the Muay Thai habit of starting slow throughout his K1 career. Um I mean, Borkow hasn't really thrown anything back. I mean, that's probably his first returning kick. Um, th these two actually fought again. Th they, they had three fights and then they did an exhibition. It's either at the end of last year or the start of this year. Um, but yeah, yeah but Mas Sato's been retired for, for a few years. But you can just see that the, the difference in the work. You know, um, what Borkow's thrown is landing. But there's not much of it compared to Sato right now. Nice little trip by Borka here. I mean, not great for K1, but still, you know, whatever. It's a, like a little moral victory. So, Borka takes control of his left arm here. Okay. Uh, Sato pulls it down. Gets on top of Borka's uh, elbow, which is a good way of defending the clinch. You try and get your arms over the top of legs, but particularly over the elbows. It just means that they can't reach around. And then Borka turns that into a little bit of a trip. Traps his, uh, his right foot with his left. I'll show you again one more time. There you go. Here's a little trick. Particularly good when they're against the ropes like that. Yeah, Borkow knocked out Sato. Um, he's got a really famous clip. He kind of catches his teeth and then pulls him in with a big left hook. Um in their first fight. But I think Borkow probably thought that he'd be able to get Sato out of there pretty easily. I don't think he saw him as much of a challenge. I mean, that, that's not to disrespect Sato at all. Um, but I think Borkow's eye was more on Andy Sauer, Albert Kraus, Masato, those kind of guys at that, at that time. But, you know, Sato's having some success. You know, the, the team's working well for him. Throws up to the face. Borkow loading up into that low kick. Yeah, I mean, but Borkow's doing that thing where he, he starts to kind of slow himself down by throwing heavier shots. I mean, he, he's so effective and his timing's so good that he gets away with it. You know, sometimes you'll you'll try and load up into a shot and kick a knee or something by accident and hurt yourself. Whereas Borkow's timing's that good, he, it's not really a factor for him. But the straight shots through the middle are getting Borkow. The, um, the, the teeps have landed a few times and the jabs have got through a couple of times as well. So that, that angle there just shows you Look how wide Borkow's elbows are here. Um, you know, th that'll be become a factor later on in the fight. Borkow's standing quite square on. Um, and then he's got his elbows really wide, which gives this, like, this whole area here. It's a big target. How's that kick? See, Sato, you know, so... Look, if one low kick can land like that, you know, he hasn't really turned his hips over into that first one. So I'll show you again. He just kind of flicks his kick out. Now, you've got to think, if this can land, then so can the second one, So, which is kind of what he's doing. He's doubling up a lot of his work, double jabs, uh, low kicks, that kind of thing. Um, it's quite good to do, especially with kick kickboxing rules, where pretty much in everything kind of scores. So, 
you know, uh, if one jab can land, then surely a second one can too. Oh, no glove touch. Probably hurt Borkow's feelings. There's actually a really funny clip of this, you know, uh, of this fight, uh, you know, we know Borkow loses this one. And uh, the, it goes to the to the changing rooms where you see Masato and you see Andy Sarah and stuff all in the back and they're all cheering. <laughs> I think uh, no one really wanted to fight Borkow at that time. Also, you know, it, it's kind of nice when an underdog comes through. You know, Sato wasn't, you know, he, like I said, he wasn't the, the big guy coming out of Japan at that time. <clears throat> I'll just turn this up just a little bit. Okay, look at look how well Sato's doing here, just keeping it long. Like Borkow does start to lose his temper at times in fights, and you know it, it's an effective tool for him. But it does start to burn the candle a little bit quicker. Like, Sato just peppering the oh, oh, hey, Look, you seems that knee comes through. Nice boxing. You know, because Sato's so loose, he's it, it, not it's not having to load up to generate any power. So he's just like hitting Borkow, like chipping away. Everything that Borkow's throwing is quite high energy. Oh, look at that combination by Sato. So you got, I'll show you again. So he goes in for a, a skipping knee. So he switches. That knee kind of doesn't really hit. Comes back out. One, two. Low kick from the outside from, onto the from his lead leg onto Borkow's out leg. And then steps around, throws an uppercut from the side. It's really nice. You know, and you, you gotta think. You know, Borka be aware of the scoring and the fact that he's in Japan. Um, you know, he, he, he's gonna start to tire himself out. Even, even here, where he's super fit, you know, ready to fight three fights or whatever. You know, it, 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 it just tries to hit so hard all the time. And I think that was probably the plan. Like, go out quick. Get Sato out of there. You know, you've done it once, you'll do it again. So, uh, I wonder if that was a mentality going in. Nice little body shot by Sato. See, just just chipping away with his boxing. Borkow's struggling to... So, Borkow throws his teep. Um, and because he's so close, it, it's... Uh, like he, he, he has to be close for him, right? So to, to get any effect out of the teeth. Um, if not, he's just come on the end of Sato's jabs at the same time. Um, but because it was like a laboured push, like even that would be tiring. Um, rather than just popping it out quickly and just like giving him a quick like, like this kind of thing where you just push him back quick, he's had to like leg press him away. Knee comes through again by Sato. Right hand over the top. I mean, Borkow is very effective with his boxing. Another knee got through by Sato. Yeah, I mean, Borkow's doing some brilliant work of his own back. It's just that everything's so high energy. That was a better team from Borkow. So that was the shot that Borkow knocked out Sato with. This is a great little um, 
not a trick, but it's a good defence to a tee. So look, so the tee comes in. Borkow's left arm underneath his left leg. And then he takes hold of this right hand over the top. Now, Borkow could just pull back and bring him off balance. He could bring him up high. Uh, you know, whatever. He could even just push him forwards. Um, and then Sato would have to drop his leg. He could kick it, that kind of thing. But what he does is pulls to the outside of his leg here. Gives him like a little bit of a like a, a fake pull first. And then pulls his leg across into a big left hook. Okay, so I'll show you one more time. Um, look how quickly he does it. T comes back. Now watch the speed of this. Just pulls and then left hook over the top. But Borka, he's looking fatigued. You know, he's starting to look tired. I mean, he's still sharp with the with the work that he's throwing, like here. But he's, you know, he's looking worn. You can actually hear Sato's corner screaming, saying, saying he's tired, he's tired. I mean, just great work by Sato. You know, um, the way that he stayed so loose with his boxing and his footwork. You know, he, he hasn't loaded up into anything. It's like the, there's not really like the, the big, huge oxygen debt that Borka would have. Like, you know, from trying to throw so hard. Um, uh, you know, it, it, even though Borka has been great here, you know, he, he, he has had really good moments. He's had a few misses. There's been times when he's, like, his timing's just been off. And it's because he's trying to hit hard all the time. And uh, he slowed himself down a little bit. Sato off the stool before Borka. This really was like the golden days of K1. It was amazing. You know, you got to think probably on the judges' scorecard, Sato would be ahead. That's why when people have speculated that it was a, a you know, a, a, a dive by Borka, it wasn't. Borka was already losing, but he was still fighting hard. Oh well, Borka throws that overhand right, <laughs> like it really t brings his head off the center line to throw it to. So oh, look, look. So the jab comes out long. And Borka tries to get this right hand over the top, but he'll put his left, his head right off the center line to get it there. Something to be wary of if you are going to practice these shots yourself. Is don't leave your head straight like where it is. Like bring it down off the center line, and. Uh, yeah, not really against southpaws. It's much less effective against southpaws. If they can get the timing with their right hooks, you can leave yourself in trouble. But you can see he's just like kind of windmilling in. He's throwing it very, throwing it big, and it's a, it's it's not landing very often. So it's a big. Uh, Big energy drain. You know, he's trying to keep a rhythm. That's why Bork, if you look at his footwork here, he's, he's bouncing. It's like very unlike Bork how to do that. But all he's trying to do is keep a rhythm, he's trying to keep his rhythm high. Um, but you keep, but like, just in this second here, look, look how he's breathing. And it's not that he wasn't fit, you know. Uh, just good work by Sato, keeping Borkow busy. Those knees are having an effect, especially now that his breathing's not right. You see Borkow now very heavy-footed. Show you look, so look at his footwork. It's gone very heavy, flat. Now, 
That knee got through. I don't know if that was a massively damaging shot. It's really hard to tell from where that landed. I'll just show look again. Yeah, it was kind of on the liver, I guess. But now, look, he's has just gone completely flat. And down he goes. It's a strange knockout. Um, I think Borkow's got too much pride to have taken a dive, so I'd like to remove that that theory. But just go, go back to the moments leading up to that. Uh, I'll go from here. I mean, Borkow's really given it all. You know, he, he's very flat now here. And knee got through. Yeah. Just uh, pushing him around. For sure, the, the boxing got on top of him too. But I think that the, it was that knee that, that was, you know, the the big thing. So I'll just see if it shows any slow motion angles. Yeah, I mean... We've seen Borkow take bigger shots than that. I mean, he was just exhausted. Something strange is how how he kind of braces his fall like that. So I, I do understand why people would think I oh, dive or whatever. Strange. But, yeah, he was just uh, just exhausted. And it was from the accumulation of body shots. And, uh, you know, just sat all being busier, flustering him. You know, he was catching Borkow with like three or four shots and then moving back out again. And Borkow was trying to return with like big hooks or like the overhand right that we kept seeing. So, yeah, it all took its toll. But, uh, yeah, good fight anyway. If there are any fights that you want me to look at, just uh, yeah, leave them in the description. I'll get, I'll get around to them. Or leave them in the comments, sorry. And I'll uh, I'll speak to you soon.